the longest individual time trial of this year's World Tour Espana is today or Tuesday the 2nd of September if you're watching this in the days afterwards. Anyway, this is still a discipline where technology can give you a real advantage and riders, teams and equipment sponsors are still pushing the UCI stringent regulations to their limits. We caught a few snippets of equipment that certain riders will be using on the stage and we also caught up with David Miller, a previous winner of a time trial at the Vuelta España, about his thoughts on equipment and also on the stage itself. So David, things have changed a lot since you turned pro many moons ago, I hope you don't mind me saying, but the equipment regulations from the UCI are quite stringent, not just for the actual equipment itself, but also for the position that you can get into as a rider. In your opinion, are the rules at the moment the correct rules, or could there be certain changes made by the UCI? I think um, this year they made a big step forward, actually it's a bit of a leap forward really, in that they give, they've given a dispensation to riders over 190 centimetres tall. At the moment a maximum ex um, difference between your bottom bracket axle and the end of your TT bars of 80 centimetres, and then they've extended that to 85 for the tall guys, which is, which is great for me because it means for the first time in probably my career I've been able to actually have my proper position. Now one rider who's had his fair share of great individual time trial results in the past is the Estonian rider Tanel Kanget from Team Astana and this is his team specialised shiv bike. One of the newest models, it's got the direct mount front brakes here. He's also using something which you'll see on a number of riders bikes which looks like quite a stubby saddle. This is the Sotero model and what that enables the riders to do is to sit further forward without being too uncomfortable. The UCI rules stipulate that the saddles have to be completely level, they can't point down and there also has to be a five centimetre gap from here to the centre of the bottom bracket if you draw a line down. So they can't go too far forward, but they'll sit forward in order to have the same kind of angle in their legs they'd have on their standard road bike. He's also using Campagnolo's super record EPS group set, which means he's got the shifters both on the sides here and also on the handlebar extension on the front of the time trial. And if you're wondering what this bit of rubber is around here, well, that's simply Campag's method of turning off the battery when it's not being used. You have to keep it fairly standardised, because otherwise we would the bottom line is, although it's great to have the innovation like um, stuff that Graham O'Brien led with the Superman position and his kind of his, his scrunch position before that, um, the bottom line is that makes the kind of the playing field uneven in that not everybody can get that equipment. So I think what they've tried to do is by standardising it, giving access to everybody to the same equipment, to the same opportunity to to compete fairly against each other. Behind me here on top of their car you can see David Miller's time trial bike and if we have a quick look at his bike it's a fairly standard piece of equipment. We've got a Cervelo P5 frame at the heart of the bike, a Mavic disc wheel here at the back and there'll be a deep section time trial wheel at the front. We've got the 3T bars and stem integrated here. We've also got the Magura hydraulic brakes. At the very top of the bike you can see a physique saddle, now that's a time trial specific saddle and it's quite short in order to allow him to get a bit further forward than he would do normally with a normal saddle while still meeting the UCI regulations. One thing which I did think was slightly different were the lengths of the cranks. Now he's got 180mm cranks on here, that is quite long in comparison to the standard 175s. However, I've just had a quick look at his road bike on the other side and also the rider Hedgedale's road bike and they're both running 180mm on those as well. I mean how does a bike like that with all of the other equipment on top of it, electronic gears, the great disc wheels, how does that feel compared to the bikes that you used to use back in the olden days? Oh, I mean if you'd shown me um, my P5 now, like if take it back in time, I'd have thought it was just something space age. But the electric gears and everything and just the, they, I mean they're just the stiffness, the, the aerodynamics, these, the bikes are, are just light years ahead of where they were when my career started, when it was a bit of a joke really. They were still kind of doing 24 inch front wheels and 26 inch front wheels and thought it was actually my first team they thought i was mad for having two wheels the same size which was chris borgman had started you saw of the smaller front wheels they thought you could then get lower down at the front and oh, it's just all this old wives tales so no it's just, the sport's a lot better now so finally prediction for the uh, time trial here at the welter uh tony martin or chris Froome actually um they'd be the two safe bets i, I haven't actually seen the chorus but Tony Martin on any, any course when he's going well can go good and I think this, this course if it's got the hill at the beginning that everyone's talking about then it'll be good for Chris Froome so between those two I'd say. Alright well thanks very much for your time and I guess enjoy your last Grand Tour. Yeah thanks Dan.